think that uh, we would agree one day we were talking and uh, there was seemed to be a, very, a great lack of lack of bands that uh, were interested in doing uh, erotic covers of the early Bee Gees catalog. Mm -hmm. And uh, I thought that maybe I would say that we just saw like a, a gap in the market and we dove right in. Yeah, I totally agree. Take this in hand And make it stand Behind the chair Robinson. I'm here with the BJ's and they do erotic covers of the early Bee Gees catalog. What made you guys want to do pornographic renditions of the early Bee Gees songs? Well, um, <laughs> I wouldn't actually say that music is pornographic. pornographic yeah, that's a label people really like to attach to the music and I, we would never do that. Though. No. I would, I would, what would you call it? We prefer to think of ourselves as an erotic yeah. act. Yeah. There's a great, you know, there's a it's a wide range of uh, things that go on in like the sexual realm, and I, th I wouldn't want to Pegasus uh, purely pornographic. I think that song is short. I think you're missing in uh, on a lot of the uh, the subtlety that goes on in the music. Every Christian lion hearted man will show you his penis. Every take what the Bee Gees were doing and we open it up for... The Bee Gees were incredibly uh, sexual people mm -hmm. and uh, I don't think that the Australian or the Americans at the time were ready for... For them, yeah. I mean, people, you know, loved their music but they didn't really hear what the Bee Gees really were trying to say and that's kind of what we're... Well, we, were, we didn't either. We just wanted to take some of the songs and make it a little dirtier. Yeah. Have you seen my wife, Mr. Jones? Do you know what she's like on the inside? Don't go licking too loud, you'll cause a landslide. Mr. Jones. Oh, actually. It's a, we took a little bit of an artist's license with this, wouldn't you say, because yeah. the actual rimming disaster didn't take place in uh, New York at all. There was a, it was to actually it was based on something that happened in Norway in uh, 1961, yeah. <laughs> and a really ugly situation. But uh, we wanted to like, you know, to save people a little bit of embarrassment, we wanted to change things around a bit and use our artist's license to embellish on the details and, you know, save all the parties involved from the, the embarrassment. Have you guys ever considered making an erotic rendition of any of the the disco era Bee Gees albums? Oh no, uh, we, we already consider that music to be pretty pornographic. <laughs> um, we, we like to stick with the 60s era Bee Gees. 67 and earlier pretty much. We won't, we won't even dip a toe in 1968. No way. You don't know what it's like Baby, you don't know what it's like To blow somebody To blow somebody The way I blow you We've played any number of gigs and we're not in the habit of turning down work. We've, uh, we've played a lot of places. I like weddings. Uh, bar mitzvahs. Funerals. Sex parties. Quinceaneras. Brisses. Coming of age parties. Book signings, ice cream socials, birthdays, gangbangs, communions, orgies, roller skating parties, PowerPoint presentations, not bachelor parties, but not <laughs> bachelorette parties. Definitely not bachelorette no. parties. Oh so. my god, that oh, was terrible. Yeah, still sore from the last one. Yeah, and all that penis worship. God, yeah, it's just uh, terrible. Oh, you know, and uh, well, yard sales. Too. Yeah, yeah, yard sales. Well, and uh, we've also played at Ricky's house. Mm -hmm. To come to castle be ever so horny it's home. Her eyes they widened and she saw that vegetable bone. She said 